Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 11 of my C video tutorial. Today, I'm going to focus on text file I.O. with the C programming language. If you haven't seen any of the previous parts of this tutorial, I provide a link in the upper right hand corner and you should probably take a look at them. Now basically C is going to provide numerous methods for working with files. Now a file is just a block of memory with a name. However, the file in actuality can be stored in many blocks of memory that are not necessarily sequential. However, you don't really need to worry about that because the C compiler is going to act like they are sequential. And in this part of the tutorial, I'm going to specifically focus in and cover how to work with files if they are represented as text files. And in the next part of the tutorial, I'll cover how to use what are called binary file I.O. Well, I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. Okay, so we have our little basic setup here, and the very first thing that I'm going to do is show you how to write to a file. So I'm going to create an int, and it's going to be called random number. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a file type, and this is actually going to be a pointer to a file. And after I create that, I can then go pfile is equal to fopen, and I can open or create my file in memory. Now, this part right here, right now I'm just going to put a W inside of it. And what that's going to do is say that I want to open the file, or if it doesn't exist currently, I want to create it. And either way, I'm going to completely delete what is there, and this is going to provide me with write access or the capability to write to this file called randomnumbers.txt. Now there's a couple other different things we could put inside of here. We could put an A, and when I say inside of here, I'm referring to this area right here. And if we put an A inside of there, what that's going to do is open or create a text file and then append anything we decide to add to the end of whatever is currently there. So this is in essence append. I can also of course read and we're going to cover this in a second. What this is going to do is open a file and allow us to read from it. Another thing that we can do is we could put a plus sign inside of here and what this is going to say is open or create a file then append for writing and reading. We could also put a plus sign here. This is going to say open for reading and writing. And then we could put a W plus and that's going to say open or create and delete original and this is going to allow us to read and write to that file. So those are the different codes you can put in there and I'm going to show you a couple of them as this continues. Now what we need to do is after we checked or tried to open this file we're going to check to make sure that it actually was open. And the way that we're going to do that is whenever f open is called if the file wasn't opened it's going to return a 1. So we're going to put in here not p file and in this situation we're going to say printf error doesn't really matter couldn't write to file that's good enough and then we could put in here return one because an error occurred all right and that's going to end our program but if we get through here then we know that we got to a situation in which we are going to be able to write to this file so what i want to do is just print 10 random numbers inside of here so while well, i is less than 10 and then increment i and then assign to my random number I'm just going to go random number modulus 100 and this is just an easy way to generate random numbers and then what I'm going to use is what is called fprintf and it's basically just going to print whatever is supplied to a file just like printf prints to the screen and how it works out is you go and make a reference to the file we're going to print to and then you have the type of data you want to print and you could throw a new line in there if you'd like to and then you go and say exactly what information you want to print to the file and it's going to cycle through and as each of these random numbers is generated it is going to take them and print them to the file and that's how they work and if we get down here well we know everything works so we could say success writing to file and then the very last thing that we want to do is close the file and to do that we just go if f close p pass it the pointer to the file is not equal to zero and of course it's going to return a one if everything went well and a zero if it didn't go well so in a situation in which it didn't go well we're going to say error file not closed and basically we're going to need to call fclose on all of the different files that we open. Otherwise we're going to either run out of file handlers or we're going to run out of memory. Same sort of issues that have come up in the past. So we can file save that. 
and execute. And success writing to file says that everything worked. Well, let's go in and actually check to see if everything worked. And we're basically going to use some of this code that we have right here because it's no use in throwing it out. And all the code, of course, is available in a link in the description. So we don't need this guy right here, but we do need a buffer to store the information that we're going to be pulling out of the file. And we're defining here that we only expect a maximum of 1,000 characters per line to be needed. We're going to leave this exactly the way that it is. We're going to leave this exactly the same as it is, except we're going to say we want to read this time. We can leave this error here. Uh, spell couldn't, right? There we are. Got that fixed. And then this is the part where we're going to actually be changing some things. I'm just going to get rid of this all together. Change this to success reading from file. We can also keep this the same because we also want to close that. So in this area is where we're going to be changing some things. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use fgets and it's going to read up to a thousand characters per line until fgets is going to return a value of null which is going to occur when it reaches the end of the file. So to do that I'm going to say fgets and what I need to pass into it is a buffer which is where all this data is going to be stored and then I'm going to say I'm expecting up to a thousand characters per line and then the file that I want to read from and I'm going to continue doing this as long as it's not equal to null or end of file and then I can come in here and just say print f and I know this is going to be a string buffer ba -ba -da, and file save and bounce over here and there you can see a whole bunch of random numbers printed out success reading from file also printed out so that's how, one way that you can print out this information. Another way, let's get rid of this all together. We could also come in here and say while f scanf. And what this is going to allow us to do is to pass the file and the data type to read and the buffer, of course, to store everything in. And then we're going to check for valid data because f scanf is going to return a number other than one if the data doesn't match a string. So we're going to pass in, like I said, the file. And then we're also going to pass in the type of data that we expect and then buffer which is where the information is going to be stored and then we're going to check wow it's not equal to one and then what the heck let's try a different one this time i'm going to use puts to print this information out and puts is just going to output the string plus a new line see that's why i didn't put the new line in there previously i put a new line inside of it and we can save that clear this and there you can see the information printed out again. So there's two different ways to read information from a file. Now the next thing I'm going to do is show you exactly how you can sort of move around within a file and print different types of information. We're going to keep our buffer in this situation and we're also going to keep this file right here. This time we're going to use random words just to use different types of data and we want to read and write from it so I'm just going to put R plus inside of there just like previously I'm going to make sure the file was properly opened and then we can get rid of all this now what I can do I'm going to show you another thing if I want to directly print directly to the file I could do something like uh, messing with strings and then just say the file that I want to print to and that will allow me to directly print to it. Another thing I can do is let's say I want to move around within this data that I just put inside of the file and change some of it. Well I could use another function called fseek and I just need to say okay what file do I want to work with. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that I want to go 12 characters in from the beginning and how you say from the beginning of the file is to put seek set stands for whenever I want to move 12 characters forward I want to start from the beginning of the file okay so that's what seek set means we also have seek current and we're going to show you these here in a second and this says move if this was seek current here this would be move 12 characters based off of current position in file then you have seek end and that's going to say move based off of starting at end of file. So those are those three different things. And just so they stay here on the screen, I'm just going to do this. So there we are. So I'm saying I want to start at the beginning of the file and I want to move 12 characters in. After I do that, let's say that I want to change this to messing with files instead of messing with strings. Well, I can do that. Let's just bounce here. And I'm just going to use fputs again. 
So I, in essence, sort of like moved the cursor inside of the file, and now I'm going to change some things. So let's say I want to change this to files. Okay, well that's the data that I want to put inside of there. And there's a couple more intricate ways of messing around with this, but I'm just trying to keep it nice and simple. So F puts, I'm going to say that I, in essence, moved the cursor 12 characters in from the beginning, and I'm going to overwrite strings with the word files with a couple spaces. I can do this. Yeah, let's bounce down here, and I just pasted this in. This is going to print out our information. However, since this is going to be a stream, and I just printed out this information to files, where do you think the cursor is? It's actually going to be out here. So whenever I say that I want to print that information out, guess what? There's no information to print. So what I need to do first, I can use fseek. I can use a couple different things, but like I said, I just want to keep this simple. Throw that inside of there, and change this to zero. That's going to move my cursor back to the beginning of my file. And I can file save that, execute, messing with files prints out on the screen just like it should. Now, just to prove to you, let's go like this, file save, got rid of that, didn't go back to the beginning of the file, execute, success reading from file, but it didn't print it out because there was nothing to print. So that's very important. Make sure that you go back to where you want to print the information from. And of course, if I wanted to go to the end of the file, I could just go like this, paste that inside of there, leave this set to zero, doesn't matter, and say seek end. There we are. That's going to move me to the end of the file if I'd want to do that. Another piece of information I could get is I could get how many bytes I am from the beginning of the file. And to do that, so let's just create a long and let's call it number of bytes. I'm going to use a function called ftel and pass in the file. And this is also a way to, since I already put my cursor at the end of the file, and ftel is going to tell me how far I am from the beginning. This is going to tell me how big or the number of total bytes inside of my file. And I could do something like printf number of bytes in file. Print that out. And there you can see number of bytes in file is equal to 20. And then, of course, if I wanted to, this would be like a long way of going back to the beginning of the file. But since I know I have 20 bytes inside of here, I could now use fseek, pass in p file and change this to negative 20 and seek cur and if that is correct that should print the information back to the screen let's file save it and there you can see messing with files prints out on the screen so those are a bunch of different ways to mess around with files using the C programming language if anything wasn't completely clear please leave a question or comment below otherwise till next time